Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the first video on oil and gas accounting. And we will start with explaining the common terms that are used in oil and gas accounting. This will be followed by explaining the users of oil and gas information and the types of information needed. Then we will discuss the types of cost incurred by oil and gas exploration and producing activities. Next, we will talk about generally accepted historical cost methods. Then we will talk about the accounting treatment of cost under successful and full cost method and solve an illustration to determine net income under the two methods. Next, we will talk about the historical development of accounting methods and current status. Then we will distinguish between successful efforts and full cost method. And finally, we will explain how to record general entries under successful efforts and full cost method. Please like, subscribe and share my channel to search for accounting lessons and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video. For all of your questions, comments and suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. And for webinar and guest speaker invites, please send me a message at accountingamir at gmail.com. Accounting is a K. We hope that this video help students in their academic development and teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. We also hope that this video help fresh graduates who have joined the oil and gas companies and want to refresh their learning on oil and gas accounting. So let us start with explaining the common terms that are used in oil and gas accounting. And the first one is reservoir. Reservoir is a porous and permeable underground formation containing producible oil or gas that is confined by impermeable rock or water barriers and is individual and separate from other reservoirs. In the next slide, we are going to talk about the types of reservoir. We have proved reserves and uh, these reserves are, have, are reasonably certain to be recovered in the future from known reservoirs under existing economic and operating conditions such as current price and cost, current technology, etc. Not proved reserves are all the reserves not satisfying the conditions for proof reserves uh, as such. Then we have proved underdeveloped reserves. And these are the reserves that are expected to be recovered from either new wells drilled or undrilled acreage or existing wells where the relative major expenditure is required for recompletion or by using improved recovery techniques. Then we have proved developed reserves and these are the reserves that are expected to be recovered through existing wells with existing equipment and operating methods or improved recovery techniques through successful pilot project or successfully installed programs. Next, let us talk about new field, field, proved area and service well. A new field is an oil and gas field discovered in a location where oil and gas have not been previously found. A field is an area consisting of a single reservoir or multiple reservoirs 
related to the same geological structural feature. There may be two or more reservoirs in a field separated by intervening impervious strata or geologic barriers. Reservoirs that are in overlapping or adjacent fields may be treated as a single operational field. Then we have the proved area, the portion of a property at a certain depth to which proved reserves have been specifically attributed. Then we have a service well and this is a well drilled for the purpose of supporting production for example a gas injection well, a water injection well or a salt water disposal, disposal well. Next we are going to talk about oil and gas producing activities, proved properties and unproved properties. Oil and gas producing activities are the activities involving the acquisition of mineral interest in properties, exploration, development and production of crude oil and natural gas. Proof properties are properties with known proved reserves. Unproved properties are the properties with no proved reserves. Next, we are going to talk about a stratigraphic test well, exploratory test well, and development well. A stratigraphic test well is a well drilled for information only. Such wells are drilled to obtain information about subsurface geological layers and the depth of those layers. Stratigraphic test wells are classified as exploratory type stratigraphic test well and a, strat a, a stratigraphic test well is, is one that is not drilled in a proved area. Then we have the development type stratigraphic test well. This is a stratigraphic test well drilled in a proved area. Then we have exploratory well, a well that is not a development well, a service well or a stratigraphic test well that is a well drilled to find and produce oil or gas in an unproved area to find a near new reservoir in a field with another reservoir which is productive or to extend a known reservoir. If an exploratory well finds proved reserves, an area around the well at the depth of the proved reservoir is designated a proved area. So exploratory well is a well drilled in an unproved area and is an exploratory well and if an exploratory well finds proved reserves, an area around the well at the depth of the proved reservoir is designated a proved area. Next we have the development well and if additional wells are drilled within the proved area to the proved depth the wells are considered development wells. So as a result of the first successful well on a property the property is reclassified from an unproved property to a proved property. However, although a, the first, first successful well on a property proves the property, it will prove only a designated area at a specified depth and not prove the entire area of the property. Therefore, exploratory wells may still be drilled on a property even if that property has been proved as a result of a previous successful well. The classification of a well as either an exploratory well or a development well depends upon the engineering and geological data. However, in making classifications that will be used for financial reporting, the engineers and geologists follow the definition of proved 
and proved developed reserves given in SFAS number 25 and related SEC regulation SX4-10. That states that the number of wells that must be drilled in order to classify a reservoir as proved may depend upon the size of the reservoir, whether the area is an explored area or whether developed reservoirs with similar characteristics exist in the area. Let's, let us look into an example of exploratory and development well. And it is assumed that all wells find oil at the same depth of horizon. So there is a lease agreement and this is the estimated reservoir and all the area is a unproved area. Now well 1 is an exploratory well because it is drilled in an unproved area. Now, assuming well 1 finds oil, the resulting proof area is represented by the circled area. This is the one. Now, well 2 is also an exploratory well because it is drilled in an unproved area. Now, assuming well 2 also finds oil, the resulting proof area is represented by the circled area. So, there are two proved areas in this unproved property. Now, well 3 and 4 are exploratory wells as well because they are drilled in unproved area. Now, assuming wells 3 and 4 find oil, the boundaries of the reservoir are defined and the entire reservoir is classified as a proved area. Now, if well 5 is a developed is a development well and not a exploratory because it is drilled in a proved area. Next, let us talk about wildcat well, delineation well and okay. So this is not a delineation well, this is extension well. So a wildcat well is a typically a well drilled in a location where there has been no exploration or production in the general area. Next we have the delineation well. A well, uh, a deletion well, a delineation well is one drilled to determine the boundaries or the extent of the reservoir. Now, both wildcat wells and delineation wells are drilled in unproved areas and are always classified as exploratory wells. Then we have an extension well and an extension well is a well that is drilled to test and extend the boundaries of a known proved area reservoir sorry so the extension wells are also included in the definition of exploratory wells however these wells are often misclassified since they are frequently drilled on a proved property the distinguishing characteristics of an extension well is that it is drilled with an intention of adding new proved reserves Wells that are drilled to add proved reserves are exploratory wells, while wells that are drilled to produce known reserves are development wells. Thus, even though a well is drilled in a producing region, if the intention is to test for new reserves, then the well is classified as an extension well and accounted for as an exploratory well. Next, let us talk about the major users of accounting information. The first one is external investors and creditors. They use financial accounting information 
then tax authorities they rely on tax accounting information that allows them to determine and pay income taxes companies and other entities involved in joint operations use contract accounting data as well as financial accounting information to assess performance and compliance under joint operation agreements and other petroleum contracts government entities also use contract accounting data as well as financial accounting information to assess performance and compliance under the joint operating agreements and other petroleum contracts internal company management needs all types of information in order to oversee operations and evaluate company performance next we are going to discuss the type of cost in incurred by oil and gas exploration and producing activities and the first one is acquisition cost and these are the costs that are incurred in acquiring a property for example cost incurred in acquiring the rights to explore drill and produce oil and natural gas domestically these rights are normally acquired by obtaining an oil and gas and mineral lease we have already talked about two pro type of properties unproved properties that is the properties that are unexplored and are not known to contain oil and gas it is acquired by leasing and then we have proved properties that is the property acquired after it has been proven the second type of cost that is incurred is the exploration cost and these are the cost in exploring the property it involves identifying areas that may warrant examination and examining specific areas including drilling exploratory wells exploration involves identifying areas that may warrant examination and examining specific areas using a variety of geological and geophysical exploration activities and drilling exploratory wells exploration cost may be related to general exploration activities uh, non drilling exploration uh, or they may be incurred in relation to drilling exploratory wells or that is drilling related exploration so the third cost is the development cost and these are the cost incurred in pre preparing proof reserves for production that is cost incurred to obtain access to proof reserves and to provide facilities for extracting treating gathering and storing oil and gas the fourth cost is a production cost and this is the cost incurred in lifting the oil and gas to the surface and in gathering treatment and storing the oil and gas in the next slide we are going to talk about generally accepted historical cost methods the four basic type of cost that we have just not talked about the acquisition cost exploration cost development cost and production cost these cost must be accounted for using one of the two generally accepted historical cost methods the difference between the two method is in whether the cost is to be capitalized or expensed when incurred the two methods are the successful effort method in this method of accounting a direct relationship is required between the cost incurred and reserves discovered thus only exploratory drilling cost that are successful are capitalized unsuccessful exploratory drilling cost do not result in an asset with future economic benefits and are therefore expensed the second type of 
cost is the method is the full cost method and this considers both successful and unsuccessful cost incurred in the search for reserves as a necessary part of the cost of finding oil and gas so the in this case both the costs are going to be capitalized so let us compare the two accounting methods the successful effort method and the full cost accounting method now under successful effort method if the exploration is successful then the cost are going to be capitalized if the exploration cost is unsuccessful cost are going to be expensed under full cost accounting all cost are capitalized whether it is successful or unsuccessful exploration the size of the cost center in the case of successful effort accounting is the cost center that is the lease or the field or the reservoir but in the case of full cost accounting the cost center is the country now acquisition and development cost are ex are capitalized in both the cases while production cost are expensed in both the methods next let us talk about accounting treatment of these cost under successful effort method and full cost method the divergent accounting treatment of unsuccessful exploratory drilling cost under successful effort uh, exploratory drilling cost under successful effort versus uh, full cost accounting can have a substantial impact on the income statement of exploration and production companies a company with a large exploratory drilling program and a normal unsuccessful drilling rate would under successful effort method have a significant amount of dry hole expense now those dry hole cost would adversely affect the net income of a successful efforts company on the other hand a full cost company would capitalize exploratory dry hole cost and therefore these cost would typically have no immediate impact on net income they would however reduce the net income through future amortization the adverse effect on net income of expensing exploratory dry hole cost under successful effort may be especially significant for smaller companies let us solve an example to illustrate the impact of the full cost and successful effort accounting method on a financial statement of lucky company now lucky company began operation on march 3 1995 with the acquisition of a lease in texas during the first year the following cost were incurred debt the dda depreciation depletion and amortization taken and the following revenues were earned so these are the revenues and cost and we have to put them under successful effort method and the full cost method so let us calculate so we have a revenue of 100000 the expenses are and i would like to use this sheet as well to explain this illustration so first of all we have the gng cost and gng cost is going to be expensed so 
under the successful effort we are going to record this in the income statement for 30,000 and obviously under the full cost the GNG cost will be capitalized so it is and it is not expensed then we have the exploratory dry hole and exploratory dry hole is expensed under successful effort method so we are going to record in the income statement 120,000 again since it is capitalized under the full cost accounting we are going to we are not going to record it then we have the production cost and the production cost in either case is expensed so the production cost is expensed for uh, 25,000 then we have the dda expense depreciation depletion and amortization for successful effort it is 40000 and for full cost it is 90000 and the total cost oh i made a mistake actually these numbers should have been here 30000 30,000, 120,000, uh, 25,000, and 40,000. And the total cost is going to be 1,295,000. And for the full cost this will be 115,000 so the net income in the case of successful effort actually this will be a loss a loss of one million one hundred and ninety five thousand this is a loss and in the case of full cost also there is a loss but the loss will be of 15,000 only. So as can be seen that uh, that the successful effort method result in a much greater loss than the full cost method uh, as we can compare and the majority of the difference that is the difference of loss is for is 1,180,000 and the difference is caused by the treatment of the GNG cost the way we have treated it and the dry hole cost under the successful effort method and the cost were expensed while the, under the full cost these costs were capitalized so and the same, same time another difference is the amount amortization of uh, recognized under each method under the full cost method more cost were capitalized resulting in a greater amortization uh, expense Another impact can be made on the income statement of the successful effort method but not full cost companies by the order in which uh, successful and unsuccessful wells are drilled and we are going to talk about in a minute and in case if you find difficult to read my handwriting so I have put this in a template as well and you can look into it. So another major impact can be made on the income statement of successful effort companies but not full cost companies is by the order in which successful versus unsuccessful wells are drilled and let us look into an illustration in this regard. Now Lucky Oil Company uh, a successful effort com company so they are using successful effort and not full cost 
acquires a lease that has an oil reservoir at 10,000 feet. The reservoir has an unknown fault trap that contains no oil located at the center of the reservoir. In attempting to locate, define and develop the reservoir, Lucky drills a total of five wells as shown below at a cost of 300,000. Okay, now, if the successful wells are A, B and C and they are drilled first and they are considered to have delineated the reservoir, then unsuccessful wells suppose d and e these two are unsuccessful they will be classified as development wells and in this case lucky would have no dry hole expense on its income statement relating to the five wells however if the wells d and e are drilled first they would be classified as exploratory wells and they are going to be expensed as dry holes and wells a b and c would also be classified as exploratory but they are going to be capitalized because they found the proved reserves thus in the situation described Merely changing the order in which the wells were drilled could result in a difference of 300,000 on Lucky's income statement. Oh, each, sorry. Okay, so this is going to be 300 times 2, that is 600,000. So if Lucky Company has been a full cost company, the order in which the well were drilled would have no effect on the income statement because they are going to be capitalized in either case next let us talk about historical development of accounting methods and current status and we will start with the reasons for the controversy surrounding the accounting procedures used by oil and gas exploration and producing companies now, accounting for oil and gas producing activities poses many technical and theoretical problems. The main reasons for the controversy surrounding the accounting procedures used by oil and gas exploration and production companies are the characteristics of the in industry such as high risk, high cost of investment, lack of correlation between the size of expenditure and the value of any resulting reserves, long time span from when costs are first incurred until benefits are received. So accounting for oil and gas operation has complex and specialized accounting rules and procedures. Taxation has many specialized rules on tangible drilling cost and depletion cost etc depletion rules etc government also regulates the production and pricing of oil and gas natural com companies uh, companies explore and produce from many reserves as joint venture operations that requires each of the parties to account for its proportionate share of cost and revenues and to separately report their income to the state and federal taxing authorities. Now, prior to the release of Statement of Financial Accounting Standards Number 19 in December 1977, the principal methods of financial accounting for oil and gas producing activities were successful effort method and full cost method. However, in 1969, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant issued Accounting Research Study Number 11, that is Financial Reporting in the Extractive Industries. Now, this study supported the successful effort method uh, of accounting. Then, in 1975, 
द फेडरल इनर्जी एंड कंजर्वेशन एक्ट वॉज पास एंड दिस एक्ट रिक्वायर्ड दैट द एस ई सी मस्ट आइदर प्रिस्क्राइब ऑयल एंड गैस अकाउंटिंग रूल्स और अप्रूव ऑयल एंड गैस अकाउंटिंग रूल्स डेवलप्ड बाई द फैस बी एंड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन इट इज शूड एस एफ ए एस नंबर नाइनटीन दैट प्रिस्क्राइब द सक्सेसफुल एफर्ट मैथड However in August 1978 the SEC stated that the oil and gas producing companies could use the full cost method according to accounting series release 258 or they could use the successful effort method according to accounting series release 257 or its equivalent a statement of financial accounting standard number 19 then in february 1979 the financial accounting standard board is, uh, issued the sfas number 25 that suspended sfas number 19 Uh, requirement that the successful effort method of accounting to be used sec believed that neither full cost nor successful efforts provide sufficient information concerning the financial position or operating results of oil and gas companies the primary deficiency they observed was the failure to include the most valuable asset that is oil and gas reserves in the primary financial statements the sec stated that a reserve valuation should be included in the primary financial statement that is the balance sheet and the income statement for this reason sec proposed a new method of accounting under which revenue would be recognized when reserves were discovered versus when they were produced and sold assets would be a valuation of the estimated future production of proved oil and gas reserves in place of discounted at a rate of 10% the method was called reserve recognition accounting rra and was intended by the sec to replace full cost and successful effort as the basis for the primary financial statements after a trial period in which rra statements would be presented as supplemental information in 1981 fasb issued sfas number 69 that is disclosures about oil and gas producing activities that established required disclosures for oil and gas producing companies then sfas number 69 require publicly traded companies with significant oil and gas producing activities to disclose supplementary information in their annual financial statements related to the following items historically based proved reserves quantity information capitalized cost relating to oil and gas producing activities cost incurred to property acquisition uh, exploration and development activities and results of operations for oil and gas producing activities value based a standardized measure of discounted future net cash flow relating to proved oil and gas reserve quantities and changes in the standardized measure of discounted cash flow relating to proved oil and gas reserve quantities public and non public companies are required to disclose two informational items number 1 accounting method used in accounting for oil and gas producing activities and manner of disposal disposing of capitalized cost the current status of oil and gas accounting is that the successful efforts account according to sfas number 19 and full cost according to asr 
are considered acceptable accounting methods by both the FASB and the SEC. Accounting for oil and gas transactions has been greatly influenced by the Council of Petroleum Accountants Societies, COPAS. COPAS was formed in 1961 with its activities and projects directed primarily towards issues and problems encountered in joint venture accounting. The highest level pronouncement issued by COPAS is an accounting procedure. It often issues bulletins to clarify the specific provisions of various accounting procedures. The purpose of bulletins relating to specific accounting procedures is to provide guidance and interpretation in implementing the procedures. Next, we are going to talk about the two methods, successful effort method and full cost method. And as you can see in the flow chart that the gross acquisition cost are capitalized as unproved property until either proved reserves are found or until the property is abandoned or impaired. If proved reserves are found, the property is reclassified from unproved to proved. Exploration costs are recorded in two uh, different ways depending upon the type of cost incurred. If the costs are non-drilling, they are capitalized temp, uh, they are expensed. And if the exploration cost are the drilling cost, they are capitalized temporarily as well in progress until a determination is made whether proved reserves have been found. If proved reserves are found, the drilling cost are transferred to wells and related equipment. and facilities and are charged to expense specifically DDA expense as production occurs. If proved reserves are not found, that is a dry hole, the drilling costs are expensed. Development cost, which include the cost of drilling, development wells are capitalized regardless of whether or not proved reserves are found. All production costs are expensed uh, as incurred. Now, as in the successful efforts method, gross acquisition costs are placed in an unproved property account in full cost accounting and are moved to proved property account if proved reserves are found. If the property is abandoned or impaired, the cost still continue to be capitalized, but are transferred to a abandoned or amortized base. Okay. So, Let us now go to record journal entries under the cost method and uh, under the successful effort method and full cost method. And again, I would like to use the same, this template, this will help us in answering our questions, our uh, solving our journal entries. On January 1, Lucky Company spends 200 on GNG activities to locate, to locate and explore an oil prospect. 
now under successful effort method gng cost is expensed and that's why we have gng expense debit and cash is credit under the full cost method we don't use the word expense because it is capitalized we have gng cost debit and cash credit then on january 15 lucky company acquire a 100 acre lease paying 20 per acre bonus that is the acquisition cost now when we are acquiring and both the properties are in either case will be the unproved property so unproved property 100 times 20 is is 2000 so unproved property is debit and cash is credit for full cost we add unproved property acquisition debit and cash credit now you can see in either case the costs are capitalized and that is what you can see in this template as well both the costs are capitalized then on february 20 lucky company drills a dry exploration well at a cost of 300 it is unsuccessful or non-productive exploration cost and if it is exploration and it is dry hole then the cost is going to be expensed under the successful effort method so dry hole expense is debit and cash is credit but under the full cost method the exploratory dry hole is going to be capitalized and that's why exploratory dry hole is debit and cash is credit then on march 29 company drills is successful now successful exploratory well at a cost of 325 now if the exploratory well is successful then in either case it is going to be capitalized whether it is successful uh, effort method or full cost method and that's why wells and related equipment and facility is debit and cash is credit and same is the case here as well then we go to the next journal entry as a result of successful exploratory well lucky company also reclassify and this is what we have talked about over here that if you are going to find a proved reserve then we are going to reclassify the unproved property to the proved property unproved will be recorded now as a proved if it is successful so proof so we simply reverse it the general entry you can see here that we have unproved property debit but now unproved property will be credit so we have unproved property credit unproved property acquisition credit and now because it is proved so proof property is debit and here we use the word acquisition for full cost accounting then on april 10 lucky company spends 80000 on production facilities such as flow lines now and in this case it is wells and related equipment and facility debit and cash is credit and here also wells and related equipment and facility is debit and cash is credit now you see here this is production facilities this is not the production cost so that's why it is capitalized in either case and then we go to the last one we have production lucky uh, on june 3 lucky company incur forty thousand in production cost so in either case cost are going to be expensed so production this will not be cost this is an error this should be production expense debit and cash credit production expense debit and cash credit so this completes part one on introduction to oil and gas accounting
and i hope you have enjoyed this presentation and if you found value in this video then please like subscribe and share my channel and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video and one last thing before i go if you have any suggestion for future topics or any feedback please put them in the comment section below and for webinar and guest speaker invites please send me a message at accountingamir at gmail.com remember effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity which cultivates wisdom if you have any question regarding this session then please don't hesitate to ask in the comment box or send me an email and inshallah i will reply you back thank you so much and happy learning